Hello, welcome once again. I'm Imran Gata, and you're in the stream. Today, rebellion in Mali. The coup may be over, but will the country hold together? Mayal Hassan is here, filling in as our digital producer. She's on the lookout for all your live feedback. You can tweet her your questions and comments using the hashtag AJStream, and May will get them onto the show. Welcome, May. Joining her on the couch is Sheikh Sharif Keita, who's a professor at Carleton College in Minnesota. He's Malian and, of course, well-versed in his country's cultural and political history. Sharif, welcome. We're looking forward to your contribution. Thank you so much. Now, Sharif had to get on an airplane to be with us on the orange couch. You can join us in a number of different ways, including through Google+. Just add the stream to your circles like these people did, and you could wind up in the stream. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Kelsey. And we work for WAPO Labs. And we're in the stream. Coup, rebellion, and political uncertainty. That's how two decades of democracy came to an end in Mali last month. Now the country is entering a civilian-led transition phase as it prepares for new elections. But it's doing so without half of its territory. Let me show you. The northern Azawad uh, region, uh, that's what it's called. It's home to a nomadic people known as the Tuareg. And they had declared independence over there. This is the entire country that I'm trying to circle here with my mouse pointer. And the area claimed in pink. Look at that. It's a massive area in the north of the country. Uh, this is their fourth and most successful rebellion against Mali's government. So who are the Tuareg and what do they want? Well, for starters, many don't want to be called Tuareg. They say that that name was given to them by foreigners. Instead, they prefer Kel Tamashek, meaning the people who speak Tamashek. They live in about five West African countries. In their Declaration of Independence, which I have a copy of over here, highlighted in yellow. Uh, they accused the Malian government of massacres, atrocities and humiliations, as well as 50 years of bad governance, corruption and collusion. Well, earlier we spoke with Iadu Aglesh, bassist for the hit Tuareg band called Tinariwen. Uh, we started by asking why the community was actually seeking independence now and whether or not the Tuareg people would be able to stay unified and independent. Let's take a look. Le peuple du Nord, c'est un peuple qui souffre il y a très longtemps, déjà avec la politique malienne. Et euh, les, les, les Touaregs, les Kaltamachèques, ils n'ont aucun problème. Ce n'est pas une guerre civile, ce n'est pas une guerre des couleurs. C est, c est, c est la, cette politique, elle ne nous intéresse plus parce qu'elle n'avance pas les choses, ça fait 50 ans. Donc aujourd'hui, c'est la meilleure solution d'être indépendant. Alors, tout le monde est uni, il reste à peu près 10% qui s'est divisé à peu près 10% seulement. Donc les Ménéla, vraiment, c'est la première, c'est une révolte très forte et qui, qui fait les liens entre chaque personne Touareg, chaque personne de Kaltama, chaque, elle fait les liens. Les Ménéla, c'est le seul mouvement qui on a confiance, c'est ça notre espoir. Et euh, c'est des gens qui sont propres, donc c'est sûr, tout ce qu'on vit actuellement, c'est des actes politiques étrangères qui se passent chez nous sur le terrain. Donc il y a les terroristes, il y a etc. etc. dans les médias. Mais la réalité, euh, nous, avec les Ménéla, on compte d'aller toujours dans les bons chemins et combattre tous ces obstacles pour arriver à notre objectif. L'objectif, c'est la Zawad. C'est pour tous les Touaregs, c'est pour tous les Soreils, c'est pour tous les Pelles. Ce n'est pas que les Touaregs. C'est tous les gens de la Zawad. Il y a beaucoup de tribus, noirs, rouges, et tous les couleurs. Donc c'est ça l'objectif. Well, that sums up the case for those rebelling in the north, which is home to about 10% of Mali's total population. In the south, the Malian people oppose division of the country, as do the country's neighbors, Algeria, Niger, Burkina Faso, and its former colonial ruler, France. So where does this leave Mali? Well, joining us via Skype is Andy Morgan, a writer and journalist who is currently working on a book about Tuareg music. And uh, Andy, welcome to the stream. Of course, Sharif is here as well. Andy, um, for many in the know, the stock answer when it comes to Mali and all the developments over the past couple of weeks seems to be, hey, it's complicated. Why is it so complicated? Uh. <laughs> 
Why is it so complicated? Um, it's complicated. It's funny because the Sahara is, uh, in terms of population, a very sparsely. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's quite an empty part of the world. But ever since I've been involved with it, uh, its political life has been one of the most uh, complex uh, uh, scenes or scenarios to understand since the beginning. Um, I mean, basically, you have a you have a, a, a Tuareg people who who are split over just like the Kurds in many ways are split over many different countries, um, many many of whom felt that this sort of settlement that was handed to them at the time of uh, decolonization was not very satisfactory, and uh, in this sort of uh, zone of interchange between north and south between um, black sub-saharan africa and north africa there's an incredible sort of uh, mix of of different peoples and of of, of kind of uh, 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 sort of travel of different goods and ideas and philosophies and and beliefs and religions which just turns this area into an incredibly complex area whether it's uh, Politically or anthropologically or anything like that. So uh, it is. It is a very, very difficult uh, place to understand. And uh, and I think something that's also helped that is that the the Tuareg themselves have actually not been very good at communicating right. uh, what they want or their cause or, or or anything until recently. That has changed. Okay. With a new gen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sharif. Let, let's bring you in here. The reason I ask. Yeah. Why so many people are saying it's complicated? Because from the outset, mm. you had a military coup mm -hmm. ousting a democratically elected government. Yes. From the outset, mm. this needs to be condemned. Every time you th throw that to somebody yes. like yourself, they go, hold on, maybe it shouldn't be mm -hmm. totally condemned. Mm -hmm. Why are you supporting a military coup that ousted a democratically elected government? Well, it's hard to say I'm supporting oh. it. Uh -huh. But under the conditions that were you know, obtaining at that time, uh, in uh, through, I mean, for a number of years, we've seen that Mali has been the poster child of democracy in West Africa. But behind that, there was a state in an advanced state of decomposition. For the past 10 years, corruption had overtaken all the aspects of Malian democracy, which resulted in the fact that the president was alone in making decisions. And the National Assembly, the group of elected officials who were there to stand to, uh, uh, to, to, stand to him and tell the people's point of view, had simply uh, caved in and sold out. So Atete's policy of so-called consensus had resulted in a situation where the democratic institutions were not working anymore. Mm -hmm. To the point where people were wondering, after seeing all this corruption, and after seeing the massacre of more than 100 uh, 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 members of the Malian army in the Tessalit area, uh, under armed, under equipped, they were slaughtered by the militants of the MNLA. Which to me tells me that, well, I mean, well, if you look at things outside, yes, Mali was democratic, but there was a lot of fishy things going on. And I don't think that the president of Mali was going to, uh, uh, to, 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 to just walk away after his second term and have good elections, credible elections being held because he had no intention of doing so. He was going to use the rebellion, which was already simmering in the north, to say we cannot have elections, so let me hang on for a few more months. Okay, let's try to find That's out what, what, what our community members in the Google Plus Hangout think. May is keeping a finger on the pulse of that, May? Yes, I am. We're going to get our first comment from Natalie, so let's watch. Hi there. So um, with the recent turn, return to democracy in the South um, and the upcoming elections that have been promised, I'm wondering how these elections can be held when the borders of the country are not even defined right now. And those in the North who may want to vote in an election um, conceivably at this point have no way to do that. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. Okay. Oh, so Sharif, you seem to be reacting very strongly well, to yeah, Natalie's I, comments, I, so I'm just assuming you have something Natalie to say. is right. Elections can't be held. As long as Mali's uh, territorial integrity is being questioned, 
is being taken hostage by a small group of people of the Keltamashek who are not speaking for the majority of Keltamashek who want to live in the Mali. And also, I mean, for a group of armed bandits to hijack the life of almost 5 million people living in a territory that cannot be claimed as the land of the Tuaregs. This is unrealistic. I so mean, it's, it's like the, the gypsies, you know, uh, saying, for instance, because our ancestors used to roam over so much part of Europe, now let's take weapon and claim all of Eastern Europe and Western Europe. It's exactly what is happening okay. in Mali today. Okay, but this is a group that doesn't speak for the majority of Keltamashek people. Okay, they don't speak for the majority, that's right. that's but right. you were for the coup, but then what's the next step? Well, that's <laughs> right. What, what's the next step? I think a lot of things have to be cleaned up in the Malian democracy, which I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I was no fan of what had happened uh, with Mali's democracy, because it was an empty shell democracy, which resulted in a terrible level of bad governance. The Tuaregs were victims of that. The other people in Mali, in all parts of Mali were victims of that, you see what I mean? But did everybody else take up arms and hold half of the country, hijack, uh, hijack all of the, uh, half of the country? No, because in Mali, there has been a tradition of settling dispute, age old tradition, going back to the days of the Mali Empire, which was replaced the Mali Empire going back to the 13th century, where multi, uh, multiple groups of people of different uh, uh, cultures live together, develop this bond, and develop tolerance. I mean, of all the countries okay. of, in right. Africa. Right. I mean, taking up okay. arms against Mali well, it is, looks is like, just ridiculous. It, it looks like that Natalie has a follow-up. That's right. To okay. 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 Yeah, so I, I agree with you. I think it would be very difficult to hold elections. That's but right. um, I think that, I think that even in the, in the South, it's a, it's a question right now of how do you hold elections. It's, I'm asking more about that border right there, um, right over, along the tiny neck you know, compared to the rest of the country um, of yeah. Mali around Severe, where it's very unclear who's in power. Um, I think in the north, you know, mm -hmm. calling these people armed bandits and, and this and that, I, I think that's a, a bit strong in some ways. But, not um, all of them, not all of them. I didn't say right, all of them, right. no, no. And, I'm but saying but that, I think that, that your point to holding elections is absolutely true. But um, I wonder also what your opinion on in, in holding elections in the north as well, um, mm -hmm. to find out what the people up there actually believe. Well, I feel like there is okay. one group of people who... who I think the think, people you know, that are holding the people of Mali hostage should be kicked out or convinced to lay up their arms and come to the discussion table so that, again, as Mali is redefining its democracy, I think this is the key. You see, this is an opportunity of the coup having happened, okay? Now, this is a chance for the people of Mali to say really what kind of democracy do they, do they want? Not a democracy that has been uh, uh, milked by this political class in collusion with the president. And, you know, so the people, the, 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 the people have to say what kind of democracy they want. So bring everybody to the table, people from the north, people from the south, to discuss what kind of state structure do we want? You see, do we want uh, autonomy? Do we want to give more freedom okay. to regions to deal with the issues so that everybody can use the elected representative. Okay. You see what I mean? F so F that's, you see, because see, Mali democracy has to be put in order. Okay. And 20 years, this is what the democracy okay. has Okay, now to. for Mali's democracy yes. to be put in order, that's it's right. going to need yes. outside help. It's one of the poorest Definitely. countries oh, yes. in the world. Oh, yes. I want to oh, ask yes. Andy, yeah. given that nobody recognizes the military junta yeah. and nobody recognizes um, Azawad in the north, how is this going to happen? ECOWAS has an economic blockade mm -hmm. on Mali. It's going to have to go things alone, surely. I mean, how this is going to play out yeah, is, is very, very difficult to see. There seems to be no country that's ready to recognize uh, Azawad, um, this new state that the MNLA are trying to create. Um, I mean, there are some people who, who theorize that maybe France has kind of uh, plans to, to sort of play a subtle political game and then at a certain moment weigh in and say, OK, now we have Azawad and that's OK. Um, certainly Algeria are dead against uh, Azawad um, and uh, other regional powers are too. So 
I think recognition of the state of Asawad is going to be a long time coming, that's for sure, and that is a major problem for the MNLA. Yeah. Um, uh, in the South, now that the, the new, uh, uh, new sort of, inter, uh, sort of handover agreement has been made to this new um, interim president, uh, Giancunda Traore, once he's in place, maybe then the, the previous uh, supporters of, of the Bamako re regime will come back on board, That's talking right. about the United States, uh, France and, and other regional countries. But I'm, I, I'm really not sure because I think he's going to have to prove that, uh, the, 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 uh, as, as, you know, as Sheikh says, a, a genuine sort of democratic process is yes. being put right. back, on, back in right. line. You know, yes. yep. that's his problem. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Sh Sharif, before I go back to, to May, who's going to get some more uh, yes. comments from the Google Plus Hangout community, okay. James Dahl just sent this tweet in. Um, in response to what you were saying, mm -hmm. you're saying, Keltamashek, mm -hmm. these Tuareg don't represent all the Tuareg, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that they, all the Tuareg don't want to break away and, mm -hmm. and you right. know, create their own state. Yes. Uh, he's asking, where are these magical hordes of pro-Malian Keltamashek? <laughs> well, my, uh, yes, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the people that have taken up arms are probably, you know, no more than a thousand people, heavily harmed. I would call them opportunists because they got these weapons in Libya and saw the weakness of the Malian state, which literally did not exist in the North anymore. Because the Malian state, I mean, sometimes even in Bamako, you would wonder, was there still a Malian state? I spent three months there. I kept wondering, I said, is there state still something called Malian state? So people, you see, were not surprised that these opportunists who came back from Libya with these you know, uh, uh, heavy weapons took up arms because to begin with, the president let them in without disarming them. Right. Whereas Niger, who, uh, which was also had as much, as much stake as Mali in these people's movements, yes. disarmed them. So, so what the president of Mali did, he welcomed them and said, okay, Bismillah, now you can go back with the, you know, tons of money, go sit in the north and you right. know, have fun. Okay. Do you think these people were going to sit on their hands? No, they realized that there was no state in Mali anymore. You see. They just took up arms. It was a that's perfect. Right. So a, you're saying it was a perfect storm of events. Th that's, right, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Just like you see, the coup, put uh, you know the 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 the, the, the coup leaders were also opportunists. You right. See. Okay. Because Fair enough. Let's. Mistake. Okay. Before so, we go back now, into Google Hangouts, so, sorry okay. to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah. I know you have a lot to say. <laughs> let's try and you know okay. tease it out as as okay. the show goes on. Before we go back to Google uh, Hangout, Andy, you want to mm -hmm. chime in on that? Well, yeah, I mean, opportunity, uh, opportunist, opportunist. I mean, politics is a game of opportunity. What, what isn't stated often enough, that, that this is a 50-year-old struggle. I mean, the first major uprising of the northern uh, Keltamashek and the Kidal region, which is the, the main town in the north northeast, happened in 1963, as Sharif well knows. Mm -hmm. And even that uprising was on, on, on the back of at least five years of, uh, of confusion of what the status of the Kaltamashek would be mm -hmm. in an independent Mali. Mm -hmm. we, we, and, and France played a major part in that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people say they're opportunists, you know, for sure, they grabbed an opportunity yes. just like they grabbed an opportunity in 1963 and they grabbed an opportunity in 1990, yeah. which was the, when the last major rebellion happened. Yes. And again, in 2006, this is a long, long, long story. Okay. You know, yes. okay. Everyone's got to understand. Sharif, don't, don't come in. Let's uh, okay. get May to, to bring in somebody from the Google right. Plus Hangout community. Okay. So our next comment comes from Eden. Mm -hmm. Azul, uh, I have a question for Andy Morgan. As you know, uh, Imaziran consider uh, their culture to be essentially secular, and this has been ignored by media claiming that the MNLA is associated with AQIM. And so I'd like to know, given your experience with the Tamashek people, what do you have to say about religious and secular dynamics in Azawad? Can I, uh, um, before you answer that, Andy, it's interesting, we got another question about that on Twitter, so there are a lot of people who are wondering mm -hmm. this. So if you could answer that for us, Andy. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. I thought you were, you, I thought you were going to quote the question on Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, it, it, the situation is that, yes, the, the, the Keltamashek have traditionally been, um, I mean, not secular because they, they're, they're Muslims, like, you know, everyone else in that part of Africa, but they have never espoused a hardline Salafist, Wahhabist, Middle Eastern form of political Islam. Never in their history. I think 
maybe in the in the in the, in the beginning of the colonial period, you can find instances of Tuareg who killed, uh, let's say, French uh, meharist or soldiers in the name of Allah or, or Islam. But certainly not in modern history has it ever happened. Okay, let's ask so, Sharif. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, let's take that mm -hmm. and throw it to Sharif and mm -hmm. bring in um, the the presence of mm -hmm. a group like Ansar Deen and, of course, uh, reports right. that Boko Haram are also yes. uh, operating. Are they as scary yes. as they are portrayed? Terribly scary, that's right. And I think, you see, uh, 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 this small group of armed bandits, that's what I call them, you see, really took a terrible gamble and are taking the whole country into a terrible gamble. Because, you see, they cannot stand. First of all, this area that they call Azawad, I mean, you know, it's ridiculous. There are so many other ethnic groups. They are just maybe 10%. Of, of the population that live there. And among the... the, the are, they are they really 10% of the population? Of the Tuareg, the, the, the yeah. Tuareg as a whole. Yeah. And among the, those, the, the, the Tuareg, the small minority, the people who took an arm are a very small minority that really are apprentice sorcerers who today are being overtaken by Ansardin that came and booted them out of whichever place they are taken. You see, this is the problem. So at, at some point, there may have been even a collusion between them. But Ansardin comes with more resolution and better, uh, they are more battle hardened. And now they, what they've done, they've taken up every, every place that uh, the MLA had claimed as theirs. Right. So, and this is a more terrible threat. And I think that this is where I would appeal to the international community. First of all, to step in, to stop this international, this okay. humanitarian crisis okay, we that got is happening. We've got two and a half minutes thing. left on the show. And, and the second Andy thing. Was well, yeah. Yeah, 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 Andy's yeah. been shaking his head. So listen, right. May, yes. we're going we're gonna to bring everybody else in yes. on the Google Plus Hangout. Uh, we're going to bring them in in the post show. Okay. I want Andy's response to this because he was okay. shaking his head in disagreement. We don't have much time left, Andy. Yes. It's, a, it's, a, it's a complex thing to, to explain. But basically, to put it bluntly, Ansar Adin is a sideshow in what's going on in northern Mali. Don't they have Timbuktu? Oh, well. I mean, don't they have no. complete control? No, No, they do not. They, they've just been meeting in Gao. The uh, religious leaders in Gao, where there was a major uh, meeting of all the northern religious leaders, rejected the uh, Salafist uh, uh, sort of uh, vision of Ansar Adin. The MNLA rejected the Salafist vision of, in, of Ansar Eddin at meetings at, uh, in meetings prior to the uprising in a camp called Zakat, which is near Kidal. And um, can, can I just, they've Andy, been, uh, yeah. Can I just mm -hmm. ask you this question? We have a tweet from Newberry about Ansar Eddin, and mm -hmm. I don't know if we've just, if we really got into the meat of them, mm -hmm. but they want to know who funds Ansar Eddin. Well, that's a really, really good question, and that's the question that all well, all the all the Kel Tamashek that I know are asking his, themselves exactly that question: Who are behind? Who is behind Yad, Yad Agali, This this leader who was once absolutely, admittedly, the leader of the of the Tuareg rebellion in the in the 1980s and 1990s, but who since took this kind of hardline Islamist path, who which which alienated him from the main stream kind of uh, Tuareg secessionist or nationalist movement. And the two, every single Kel Tamashek I meet and I talk to, they all ask the, the same question. What is Yad doing? What are Ansar Eddin doing? Why are they confusing <laughs> okay. our, 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 our struggle? Why are they making the international community so scared about what we're doing? Which okay, what Andy. we're doing is clear. You know? Okay, okay, Andy, uh, Andy yes. Sharif, I know you have, you have much more to say. Yes. Hold on, hold on. There's 45 <laughs> seconds left in the main show. Yes, we have yes. an entire post show coming up. Hope you join us for that on stream.aljazeera.com. We'll continue to get the questions and comments from our Google Plus Hangout community. They're standing by. Plus, many of you have been asking, what about the oil? We know the North has oil. That definitely plays a crucial part in this discussion. We'll be discussing that in the post show. So stay where you are, stream.aljazeera.com. On Thursday, we'll look at the September the 11th military trial set to resume at Guantanamo Bay. See you online.
Welcome back to the post show on stream.aljazeera.com. Sharif's been champing at the bit. You want to get in? Okay, so yeah. there were two aspects there. The one who funds uh, Kal Tamashek and, and the other one uh, regarding um, the fact that Andy feels that, you know, Ansar Dean and, and the others are a sideshow when it comes <laughs> that, to the, that word the sideshow is a yeah. very dangerous one. I mean, a sideshow that is ho that is holding uh, five million people hostage that are in uh, running the risk of starvation and by a group that is bringing the most backward conception of Islam to me, calling it a sideshow is terrible. Look, I mean, these are people who think that they can spread Islam by holding the uh, people to the gun. I mean, how about thinking about the good principles of Islam that says that Islam, you have to teach it by good example. That there is no coercion in Islam. How about thinking for a minute about the fact that you cannot, you build people from inside out. Okay. The best way to the heart is by becoming a blessing. God, God says and, and that Muslims should be a blessing to humanity. And absolutely. So and is that uh, and using and the, best the, way, the best way into the hearts of our Google Plus <laughs> community is to <laughs> give them a chance to talk. Okay, so I want to try right, my best to get yes. their voices on okay. AMA. Yeah. yeah, next we have Peter. I'm sure he's going to be happy to ask his yes. comments, his question. Yes. Sure. My question is for uh, Mr. Morgan. Um, what kind of state does the MNLA wish wish to implement uh, should they be successful in gaining uh, their own state? There's been very little in the way of whether it would be a democracy um, or where its capital would be. That's right. Good question. It, uh, it's uh, the, the, the declared statement is that it would be democratic, secular, <laughs> and that the, and the, the um, capital would be in Gao. Okay, well, that's yeah. I mean, Is that straightforward to the point. Uh, no, mm -hmm. no, I don't think it's going to be secular. It's not going to be democratic, because already Ansardin is among them. They'll boot them out, and from that launching pad of whichever state they have, they're going to create a lot of trouble in West Africa. That's why the international community. But this, they've not declared this. No, no, You're no, reading no, into their no, thoughts. No, 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 no. I mean, you look at yeah. the way events are happening. I mean, they, can, they, I, can uh, I ask Sherry? Can I ask Sherry yes. for a question? Yes, Sherry? thanks. Yes, yes. Can I ask you a question? That's right. Yes. Uh, is Islamism that's right a problem? Yes. In in Mali itself? No, it's it's, it's not because you see you see uh -huh. the, the Ansardin are the ones that are bringing it in because is, see, there, I mean, is there an no. organization, uh, Sherry? Is there an organization that fills stadium worth of, with sixty thousand people? In oh, Bamako, look, also look, called look, 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 these is are that, not, but these exist, are not violent groups, is what I mean. This is my problem. Why would anybody, any group take up arms and fight other groups in Mali, a country that has a tradition of discussing, of, uh, of living in harmony? I mean, yeah, but they know, can be, they can see, be, they can be, um, they can have a political problem. ideology without oh, being that's Islamist fine. No, and that take is up fine. arms. That is fine. That is okay. I mean, because see, Mali is a country that is still, you see, looking for its identity. You see, because, see, that's why, you see, uh, today, Islam has become a, a new force in Mali, which is okay. But it's an Islam that has still been respectful of the old tradition of discussing. Wait, Sharif, oh, Sharif, hold yeah. on. We want to go back to this claim of that's Mali right. being peaceful, because oh, yes, you brought right. this up in yes. the pre-show, which right. some yes. of the viewers did not have a chance to see. Yes, and yes. we um, automatically got tweets from our community okay, okay, go, go. asking you yes. to clarify. We that's had right. one from Peter who that, said, okay. was Mali really that peaceful? Yes. What about yes. at Toreg rebellions yes. in 60s and 90s? And, and then wait, wait, there's one more, yes, one more. Yes, yes. We have one from Christoph, and he said, how bad is the humanitarian situation in the north of Mali? Heard lots of reports about looting, sexual violence. Yes. violence and displacement. So what do you, you say you to see, that challenge? Well, you see, no, no, no. I'm not saying that, you see, there has not been violence between the Tuareg and the Malian state. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, you see, the fact that it shouldn't be that way. Because, you see, if a state is functioning normally, as Mali has developed a tradition of doing that, between other ethnic groups, the Tuaregs are not the only one, you know, living in the north, but they are the only ones taking up arms against Mali, against the Malian state. So. What I'm saying is that this, there is no reason why we should come to that point. But I understand maybe one reason is that the Malian state itself, you know, fell apart, which I cannot condone, you see. We need to take care of that so that the tradition of dialogue can prevail so that people, millions of people are not taken hostage by arms people. You see what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Let's, you see, uh, you know. May, may, may let's, yes. let's give whoever... Hasn't had a chance yet uh, okay. in the Hangout. Yeah, an let's opportunity. hear a comment okay. from Sophia. Okay. 
Sophia, are you there? Hi. Um, my professor is actually Bruce Whitehouse. Yes. Hello. Oh, yes. <laughs> can you hear me? Bruce was my student. We can student, hear you. Yes. yes. Hello. He's a professor now. Yes. <laughs> we can hear you, Sophia. Yes. Go on. Um, he's, he's my advisor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my question is more of the humanitarian aspect yeah, yes. uh, about the yeah. famine. Uh, yes. What's going to happen with that? What if ECOWAS goes in and it only gets worse? That's right. What are your thoughts about that, Professor Keita? Okay, I didn't hear this too well, and the sound was not very well, good, but she, yes. She said, what about the humanitarian situation? Yes. The food uh, crisis, uh, right, that's Sophia? Right. That's you were talking right. about the... Yes. Sophia, that's really the emergency. And, and I think... And wh what yes. about what, is, what ECOWAS, what ECOWAS is doing ECOWAS, is, right. is making it worse? Well, so, so, yes, that's right. I know, but the, the embargo has been lifted because there is, a, I think, more or less a process of normalization that is happening. You see, but I don't think the action is coming fast enough, unfortunately. And not only ECOWAS, I think uh, other uh, 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 humanitarian organizations have to be allowed in this area so that they can bring the necessary help. Otherwise, yeah. millions of people are going to be starving. Because again, a small group of people have taken up arm. Okay. I mean, you see, okay. that's, the, that's the part. Okay. And that's why, you see, I don't believe that this state, whatever state, whatever they call it. No state has come down to us through our history called Azawad. We just start hearing about it. From what I understand, the word Azawad means transhumans, people who move around. I mean, would the gypsies take up arms against all Westerners and say, uh, because our well, ancestors... I mean, uh, well, I mean, it's it's no, a closer, no, a well, cl see, a closer analogy thing. could be the Kurds. And well, many Kurds well, once right. a well, well, don't they? Uh, well, that's okay. But in the case of Mali, you see, the Malian state is such that it has a tradition of including everybody, is what okay. I mean. Okay. If the but, state but is, perhaps, is well, yeah, is perhaps rebuilt, Sharif, yes. perhaps Sharif, we can are, talk. You see there what are I mean? thousands of people who do not come. I want think to Andy be included. Probably in agrees state. with that. Okay. I mean. okay. Let's let's move this on a bit. Yes. Let's move this on a bit. Uh, yes. May has there been anybody in the Google Plus Hangout who hasn't had an opportunity? Okay. Um, we, or is everybody? Everybody has. Okay. Everybody's, everybody's had a chance. Let me then bring in the question of oil. Andy, you were interviewed, I think, today or yesterday regarding oil. And um, because of the lack of information out there and the fact that it's so difficult to actually uh, get to the north on the ground and independently verify things, there are conspiracy theories floating about regarding all of this being about oil and all of this being a spillover from the ousting of Gaddafi in Libya and um, you know, big companies from France, Qatar, elsewhere securing oil rights. Tell us about that. Well, um, the, 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 the entire north of Mali, uh, as, as far as I know, has now been more or less parceled off uh, in, in terms of uh, future exploitation plots, not only for oil, but also for uranium, gold and phosphates. Um, all that selling off process is, 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 uh, in, is, 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 is happening right now. And obviously, this is why this, this, this wasteland, as, as a lot of people are content to look at it, is now considered to be a very valuable piece of property that uh, a lot of people either want to own or, or you know, have some kind of control over. And the one of, really, one of the major players in, in this respect is Algeria, because uh, one of the issues is that uh, the oil field that straddles the Mali-Algerian border in this huge sort of em em sort of more or less empty northern desert, mm. um, that oil field is also shared by Algeria on the other side of the uh, of, of the Mali-Algerian border. Now, Algeria does not want to see an independent Azawad, and this is one of the major reasons. And so. A lot of analysts do believe that Algeria is playing a very uh, underhand part in what's going on. One, by manipulation of various Islamist groups like uh, Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb, which uh, is a, really a hangover from the Algerian civil war of the 1990s. And two, in the fact that Yada Ghali, uh, who has had a long association with various parts uh, either official or sh more unofficial parts of the Algerian government for many, many years, is actually doing the bidding of Algeria in some kind of way with his Ansar Adin movement in order to discredit 
what is actually a secular nationalist movement, okay. which is what the NL okay. NLA and actually I, I are. Think, and I, I think that's where uh, both you and Sharif are going to have to agree to disagree <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. for this yes. program because we have yes. run out of time, even though we try to stretch it as much as possible uh, in the post show. But that point about mm -hmm. oil, uh, oil straddling two borders, or rather the border on both sides of a, of a border, seems to be all the ingredients for trouble. So. Uh, uh, we'll probably be discussing that in the not too distant future. Andy Morgan and uh, Sheikh Sharif Keita, thank you very much for joining us to discuss Mali here on the stream. Thank you in uh, the Google Plus Hangout. You've been fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Hope to have you guys on as well in the future. It's been a fascinating and educational discussion. Now, uh, before we go, here's May with some of the other story leads that we've been following. We start off with two viral videos. Hashtag Niños Incomodos, creator Nuestro Mexico del Futuro, released a four minute piece illustrating the world Mexico's children will inherit. Take a look. The video, which ends with the proclamation, millions of us want a better country, has gotten more than 10 million views. Although originally uploaded in November, an excerpt from the documentary Alive Inside by the Music and Memory organization went viral on social media this week. In the excerpt, a semi-comatose elderly man becomes responsive after listening to music from his childhood. Uh, what's your fav favorite Cab Calloway song? Oh, I'll be on the Christmas. The documentary premieres next Wednesday and focuses on the power of music on the brain. The organization has launched an iPad donation program for patients with special needs. Next, it's social media to the rescue. A South African man who was carjacked, robbed, and stopped in the trunk may owe his release to Twitter. After texting his girlfriend about the situation, she tweeted, be on the lookout for DSS041GP. My boyfriend has just been hijacked and is in the boot. Please retweet. A retweet by influential user handle PigSpotter caught the attention of security who located and rescued the man by tracking his cell phone signal. Lastly, popular Tumblr meme Texas from Hillary received an unexpected submission on April 10th from none other than the Secretary of State herself, Hillary Clinton. Vote these stories up or down by going to our website, stream.aljazeera.com leads, and you may find them in an upcoming show. And that is it, Imran. Thanks for that, May. Thanks once again to Andy Sharif and our Google Plus Hangout community for discussing Mali with us. Tomorrow we talk Guantanamo Bay. Hope you join us for that. Bye-bye. <laughs>